we are learning more about three missing surfers found murdered in Mexico. Uh, Fox 5 Salvador Rivera joining us now in studio with the latest on this. Sal, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Uh, and it, it, I wish we were talking under better circumstances. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, yeah. th th this is your beat. You know this area more than uh, better than everybody else. What what is the latest information you're getting there? This is what we got yesterday from the Attorney General, the woman who runs the Attorney General's office in Baja, California. And she confirmed that the surfers, the missing surfers, are in fact the people found in that well on Friday. Initially, they were thinking they had a very good feeling that it was them. In fact, yeah. a source of mine in the Attorney General's office said that it's them. That's the quote he gave me over the phone, it's them. And then they took 20 hours to pull the bodies from the well. You see in the images here in a very isolated area south of Ensenada. It's about 110 miles from the border. But once you get beyond Ensenada, it's really difficult to get spots like this. But these are the type of spots that surfers That's what they love. seem to sure. exactly. They know they, this is what they love and, and they want to uh, surf in. Well, we, yesterday the AG said that they might need DNA testing to confirm the identities because the bodies were in decay, they were decomposing in that well. Mm. Late in the afternoon, she issued a uh, news release saying that the families had identified the bodies and there would be no need for DNA or for any further testing, genetic testing of any sort. So we know now for a fact definitely that the missing surfers are the people found in that well. And obviously we know that one of them was a local man from Ocean Beach, the other two were brothers from uh, Perth, Australia it sounds like, but there was there was another body found in that well. Yes, there was a fourth body and apparently from what I've been told, this was the owner of the property who went missing a little more than two weeks ago. So he also became a victim of a crime and they threw him down into that well. He was the fourth body further down in the well. And so it was a surprise when they found him. Mm -hmm. and uh, but then they put two and two together and it turned out that he was the owner of the property I who mean, had been missing for a it's while. It's a horrific story and then you, you kind of start trying to connect the dots but we can't do that until we know more from the investigation but is this something that's that's connected in terms of, of, of the people who committed these crimes or were they also responsible for that body? The fact that they knew where to in essence get rid of, of their victims is a little suspicious and then this all started from trying to steal tires off of a pickup truck it just it's all it's all yeah. shocking the, the theory behind all this right. and according to the attorney general um, they were there camping these guys show up in another truck right. and apparently approach the surfers and they either want the vehicle or the tires so there's been discrepancies there. We've right. heard stories on both sides. Whether they wanted the tires and sure. some parts of the truck or the entire truck. When they resisted, that's when the uh, shootings took place. And apparently that's how they died. They were shot in the head. Mm. And then they were taken to that well and dumped there. Okay. Another theory real fast yeah, yeah. is that since the owner of the property was also there, right. apparently they're trying to scare people out of that area. And somehow they want to take over that whole area either for landing aircraft, creating labs for drugs, or even launching mm. boats full of migrants to come all the way around to our coastline. So there's a lot of theories out there, a lot of scenarios as to why this might be tied and why this happened. Drugs are prevalent in this area, cartels are prevalent in this area in terms of the safety for tourists, because a lot of people, the argument seems to be Baja California is incredibly dangerous. And yet you ask people, it's like, no, Rosarito is super safe, and Sonata is super safe, except is it? Because these surfers, you know, you go have your lunch at, at Rosarito and Ensenada, but then you go off the beaten path to those surf spots, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, and then this happens. Is it safe for people to go down there based on this, or is this an isolated incident? And we, well, we were talking about this. and. I, quite honestly, I don't go down there, not because I don't feel safe, I just don't have the need to go down there, unless I'm working. Okay. I have neighbors, relatives, friends who go down there all the time, and they tell me nothing has ever happened to us, we don't, we're not afraid, we've never been stopped by police and asked for a bribe or anything mm -hmm. like that, but yet the State Department just issued another warning, right. avoid Baja California. We know for a fact Tijuana is a very dangerous city, but according to Mexico's president, it's only for the bad guys. 
And if mm. you're a tourist or just a resident, you're not going to be affected by all this violence. I mean, Tijuana's already had more than 700 murders so far this year. Uh, well, Sal, talk to me a little bit about, because talking about safety, sometimes when you know a little bit more about the suspects behind these three murders, and that will give you um, some pause. Can you talk to us a little bit about, about the suspects? Sure. And well, they, they always say, if, stay away from the bad spots, right? If you're not doing anything bad or illegal, chances are nothing's going to happen to you. But we know for a fact that that's not always the case. And we just had a perfect example this weekend. Remember last year, the elderly couple from yeah, San Diego, they've right. been down there. They were at a house, robbed, murdered, and also dumped in a well. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, it's, you, sometimes it's just been a bad spot at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Before we let you go, uh, it, it seems for a lot of people, the way our system here works, and you have to, you have a crime, and then there's like an investigation. It seems like they found these people awfully quickly, which leads some people to be a little suspicious of like, well, that well, really the people? It's like, how did you, the crime happens and they find these people in a heart, oh, they, they're guilty. Okay. In this case, they traced one of the phones belonging to the Australian brothers and they found it on a woman she and she also phone. had a bag of drugs. So they immediately pounced on her, started questioning and she more than likely gave up the two I other see. suspects mm -hmm. who are now in custody. And now we're told they're being, they'll be tried to the fullest extent of the law. There's two other people, we're told, who are also under investigation and might also be arrested. No charges have been yeah. filed, but that's likely coming either today or in the coming mm -hmm. days. Yeah. But the bottom line here, you look at the three faces over there, and it's just right. it's, it's a tragedy all around. Just right. heartbreaking. And, and apparently, uh, Callum Robinson and, and Jack Rhodes from San Diego, they had been down there before. Yeah. And they have been in that area surfing, so they obviously felt there was a safe place to yeah. go. Goodness. Uh, all right, so, Salvador Rivera, we thank you for coming in and, uh, and giving us the information. We appreciate it. Thank Welcome. you. Thanks. Of course.